The year is 1808. Napoleon Bonaparte is master of Europe. In ten years of war, France has eclipsed the Holy Roman Emperor, devastated Austria, humiliated Prussia, and tamed the Russian bear. Only Britain remains to oppose French domination of the continent. The Emperor now turns his attention to the conquest of Portugal, trampling his former ally Spain in the process. With the Spanish and Portuguese in open revolt, Bonaparte exacts a terrible revenge, leaving French forces scattered across the Iberian Peninsula. Sensing an opportunity to wrest Portugal from French occupation, Britain dispatches a small expeditionary force to assist Portuguese and Spanish armies in their war of liberation. By August 1808, Sir Arthur Wellesley's Anglo-Portuguese army is advancing on Marshal Junot's forces at Lisbon. Between Junot and Wellington lies the small village of Rolica, held by an advanced French detachment commanded by Henri de Boer. From the kitchen table command post, the French general considers his overall position, assessing scout reports and considering the objectives of the coming war game. The previous day, Wellesley's 95th Rifles had won a brief skirmish at Orbidos, and now the main British force approaches from the north. The French objective is not to halt the Anglo-Portuguese advance on Juno at Lisbon, but to extricate his troops in a fighting withdrawal, keeping the road open to French forces whilst delaying the British advance south. Like his historical counterpart, Henri de la Borde, Nick is awaiting French reinforcements from Moisson. At this point in the briefing, Nick's scouts report a large dust cloud to the east, which the French player eagerly interprets as incoming reinforcements. As Nick deploys his small army on the main table, the British commanders take their place for the briefing. Despite the size of the Anglo-Portuguese forces, the hilltop position Nick has chosen to occupy presents a major obstacle to the British advance. As such, our players will adopt Wellesley's historical approach of splitting his force into a frontal detachment of two mixed infantry cavalry brigades, the elite light infantry, rifle and cathedors, whilst a second column under General Trant and Portuguese line infantry will encircle the French position and attack their rear, cutting off Delaborde's escape route. The objective for the British is to hold Delaborde in place and destroy his outnumbered troops before marching south on Juno. Perhaps fittingly, as the Battle of Rolica was Sir Arthur Wellesley's first engagement of the Peninsula War. This is the first historical war games engagement for all three of our players today. Despite this inexperience, the two British players are extremely confident of victory, toasting their champagne glasses in anticipation of an easy march over French positions. As perhaps expected, but not necessitated by the setup conditions, the French player has chosen to position his troops upon the hills of Rolica. The British players form two large columns, one brigade in each, and march their infantry forward, whilst their light infantry advance forwards as a skirmishing screen. Long-range French artillery proves ineffective as the British continue their advance. Nick focuses all of his French cavalry on the left flank, gaining a local superiority over the British light dragoons. At this point in the battle, both sides immediately open fire with their musketry at extreme range, not holding fire, but firing as soon as they get the opportunity. From their hilltop positions, the French ranks dispense volley after volley of musket fire on the advancing British. Despite risking running low on ammunition, there's no shortage of supplies as the British players crack open the port. Despite their optimism, turn 4 brings with it a dramatic turn of events. Without adequate cavalry support, the British light infantry and Portuguese cathedrals have advanced forwards beyond the protection of their infantry and are now skirmishing with the French lines. At this point, Nick unleashes a devastating massed French cavalry charge which sweeps away the British light infantry, who are unable to form squares and are cut down almost to a man. Turn 5 turns French jubilation to French despair, by an advancing dust cloud that turns out not to be French reinforcements, but the other half of the Anglo-Portuguese army, now arriving to encircle the French position. On the British right-hand flank, the light dragoons are hurled into an almost suicidal uphill charge against the front of the French infantry desperate to avenge themselves upon the French following their failure to protect the light infantry. 
As the British infantry trudge forward in column, the French artillery unleashes a devastating whiff of grape shot. Despite still holding on the left flank and repelling the British cavalry attack, now the right flank is completely encircled and the position is proven to be completely precarious. Rather than engaging in a firefight, Nick opts to retreat back, drawing away from the summit of the hill. The unexpected arrival of Anglo-Portuguese troops on the right-hand flank has left the Rolica hilltop position completely untenable. Nick is forced to withdraw almost all of his infantry from the hilltop. The naturally aggressive British players determine that this is the moment to launch an all-out infantry assault. Whilst the French positions are overrun, Nick is extremely lucky in his rolls and managed to pull the artillery back to safety. Surviving British cavalry in the centre now launch a retaliatory attack on the exposed French dragoons. A whirling cavalry melee ensues, temporarily denying both sides cavalry support. Inspiring his men and leading from the front, Nick hurls Henry Delaborde into a last-ditch bayonet charge. Miraculously, the stunned British units are pushed back and unable to continue the steamroller advance on the ridge. British commander Sir Arthur Wellesley is in the thick of the fighting, leading and rallying cavalry units and pushing them back into the melee in the centre. On the British left flank, Colonel Trans Portuguese have secured the hill, and General Crawford has formed his brigade with a column to destroy the French right. The British column surges forward, brushing aside French infantry. However, against all odds, and with remarkable dice rolling, the retreating French are able to prevent a withdrawal from turning into a rout. Delabore responds by wheeling forward his guns for a final point-blank blast of grape shot into the densely packed British column. His dice rolling exceptional again. British casualties are horrific. At this last desperate moment, Wellesley spurs his horse and pushes the King's German Legion back up the hill into the French lines. Disastrously, it seems that luck has completely abandoned the British players and Wellesley's life is endangered. By rolling a one, Harriet ensures that history will remember Lieutenant General Wellesley as being killed leading a failed charge on the Rolica windmill. Firing continues along the line as a French rearguard holds the Rolica hilltop, allowing the rest of the infantry to withdraw in good order. The British generals take the opportunity to toast their victory, but it's clear that it's been at a high price. At the end of the game, both sides are in high spirits, and all players depart claiming to have won. For more wargaming video content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks to Little Wars TV for organising the Quick Strike video competition and so many inspiring games.